Andy Show. A full half hour of entertainment with all the Amos and Andy characters, plus that famous quartet. You are this netful of good and jubilee. Jeff Alexander, his chorus and his orchestra. <laughs> Right now, we find Andy in his office with his pal Amos. The Kingfish is just walking in. Well, hello there, Kingfish. Yeah, Come in. Hi, Kingfish. Uh, hello, boys. How are you? What you looking so sad about, Kingfish? Well, tomorrow, boys, I'll be married 25 years. <laughs> yeah, well, Kingfish, that ain't nothing to be sad about. Of course not. Think of the poor fellows who's only been married for five years and still got 20 to go. <laughs> uh, tell me this. Guess what is wrong, Kingfish? <laughs> well, it's about me and my wife, Sapphire. The whole thing started about four years ago. Me and her was in the house talking. George, do you realize that in four years it'll be our silver anniversary? Hmm, Sapphire, how time do fly. You mean it was that long ago that I hocked the silver? <laughs> no, no, George. Say, look what I got today. Here's a piggy bank. Gee, that's a whopper. That's a big pig. That must be a foot long. <laughs> George, we're going to start saving together. How much change have you got in your pocket? Well, uh, counting the silver and everything, uh, 18 cents. <laughs> well, come on, put it in the piggy bank. Well, now, wait a minute. I said put it in the piggy bank, George. Well, uh... I got 75 cents in change, and I'm putting that in, too. Uh, well, what happens now? George, do you realize we have already done saved 93 cents? Yeah, that's good, all right. Well, let's open up the bank now and split it. Come on. George, <laughs> you put that hammer down. We're going to put our change in this bank every day and save it. Well, now, wait a minute. Don't be silly. I ain't got change to spare every day. Well, how about saving some money on your cigar? Maybe smoke a cheaper brand. A uh, cheaper brand? Listen, these things that I get from my cigar maker now ain't no Corona Z La Corona. <laughs> I guarantee you that down in North Carolina at tobacco auctions, my boy is the lowest bidder. <laughs> Listen, George, we'll both save a little change each day. And here's why we save it. Mm -hmm. I want something to look forward to, because in just four years, me and you is going to be married 25 years, and we ought to make a trip to the scene of our honeymoon. Oh, what you want to do that for? When a man gets bit by a dog, he don't go back and stick out his leg again. <laughs> Don't you talk about our marriage. It's been wonderful. Well, if it is, I'd like to know how. George Stevens, you big bum. We're half this couple in town. All right, shut up. So we're happy. Go ahead. <laughs> we had a wonderful time on our honeymoon. We seen Niagara Falls. We was even there when the man went over the falls in a bow. Yeah, and if I'd have known then, what I know now, I'd have gone over with him, too. <laughs> well, just the same, George. We'll save all our change for the next four years. Put it in this piggy bank, and then on our silver anniversary, we'll take our honeymoon trip all over again. Well, okay, honey, if that's what you want. And, George, I'm going to look forward to this, so please, don't do nothing to spoil it. Okay, honey, you can count on me. Well, we got a good start. The piggy bank has already got money in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going in the room and change so I can fix supper. Hmm. George, put down that hammer. Uh oh well. <laughs> Put it down, honey. I'll put it down right now. Well, uh, that happened four years ago, huh, King V? Yes, and Sapphire have been putting money in there ever since. I've been dribbling a little in there, too. Uh, and you and Sapphire are going to take a trip pretty soon there. That is, if you ain't done hit that bank with a hammer. Oh, uh, Sapphire told me that she'd leave me if I messed with the piggy bank, so I ain't took nothing. Well, that's good. But uh, let me tell you what did happen. Uh, one day, after we've been saving for about two years, I turned the pig upside down to get the name of the manufacturer off the bottom of the pig. <laughs> and while I was moving the pig around there, trying to get a focus on the name, 48 cent done fell out there. Yeah, well, that could happen, all right. Well, anyway, a few months later after that, I started wondering what the number, the patent number was on the bottom of the pig. So I turned it over, and there was a little bit of number. I didn't have my glasses on, so I started kind of shaking it into focus. You know what I mean? How much you focus out? 75 cents, focus out. <laughs> 
Then the uh, accident started to happen. One day I was sitting there and I uh, uh, just picked it up to see what the pig's stomach looked like. Dollar and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we'll forget that. There, 25 cent piece and a dollar bill. Well, a dollar bill get out of that little slit. Well, I was putting on my button shoes at the time, and I just happened to have a button hook in my hand, you see? <laughs> so between looking at the pattern on my button and my shoes and focusing, there ain't nothing left in the pig. That's it. Yeah, well, that's too bad. And I love that pig. I used to call him my little pen fella. Yeah, she picked it up, and uh, uh, don't she know it's empty when she handled it? Well, I tell you, most every time I took some, I mean, every time something fell out, you see, I always dropped something in there to make up for the weight. Now, when the festivities start tomorrow, little do Sapphire know that our pig is going to have a litter of lead watches. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, she's going to be mad, ain't she? Mad? She told me that when she started that if I mess with that pig, she's going to leave me quick as a flash. Whereas you is in trouble, Kingfish. Oh, I is in a mess, boys. I can hear the echo of the walls of Jericho falling on me now. What walls is them? Well, they fell on one man once. Sit down. Now listen, Landon. I'm gonna tell you about old Jack. Gonna tell you about old Jack. Who made the walls of Jericho a come a got me in a dilemma, and I was scared to go home. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look here. Look who's coming across the street. Well, uh, Gabby Gibson, the politician. He really got himself in politics now, ain't he? Uh, hello, Gabby. Come on in. Oh, hi, boys. Hi. Glad to see you. Sure is glad to see you. Yeah, you ain't in the law business no more, is you? Uh, you don't know. You don't go into politics. What made you go in there? Well, I tell you what. In the ward where I lived, there was a horrible condition. A very horrible condition. What was that? Well, I tell you, boys. I saw that all the money was going into ward boss's pocket. Every cent was going into ward boss's pocket. So I did something about it. <laughs> Shake hands with the new ward boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, Gabby, you being a politician, you might be able to do me a favor. I got connections, Kingfish. Got connections. Oh, this is a reporting favor, Gabby. I can get you connections. Oh, this favor means a lot to me. Through me, you has got your connection. You got your connection. I want to borrow $200. You have just been disconnected. <laughs> 
Now, listen, Gavin, look here. I, I gotta get $200. I got an idea, I got an idea. Why don't you write a check on a foreign bank, a foreign bank? Say, them is interesting words you just muttered there, Gabby. Come on, what's the move? Well, if you write a check on a bank, say, Australia, it would take three weeks for the check to bounce to Australia and three weeks for it to bounce back. Yeah, say, that's a swell idea. And while that rubber check is being retreaded, I could, uh, I could raise some money and put it back. Uh, uh, look, how about you going down to the bank with me, Gavin? Sorry, boys, I ain't got time, I ain't got time. I got to go to an important meeting with all the political bosses. An important meeting. We got to decide if we was in favor of a third party, a third party. Oh, you does, huh? Yeah, you see, we had a party last night, the night before. We got to decide if we want a third party. <laughs> Hey, Andy, look here. Gabby had an idea there. That's what I'm going to do. I is going down to the bank and tell the man that I is an Australian and see if I can get him to cash an Australian check for me for $200. Then I'll make it good later. Hey, uh, tell me this. Where is Australia? I just wondering, you know, I wonder where your check is bouncing from. Well, Australia uh, sort of sticks out there in the Pacific. It's uh, surrounded by water on three sides. That's what they call a penicillin, you know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, tell me this. Uh, what is I supposed to do about it? Well, now, look, Andy. I'm going down to the bank and tell the man that I was Australian. Now, you come to the bank three minutes later after I do, walk up to me while I was talking to, to, to the man, and you think that I is your old friend from Australia, you see? Oh, yeah, I get it. Now, don't forget, when you come up, I is your old friend, Australia, down under. Down under the man's desk? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Just be there, Andy. I'll be talking to the vice president that okay the Australian check. <laughs> Oh, me, I sure hope I can convince this Mr. Hawkins that I was Australian. Oh, here he comes. Uh, how do you do? My name is Hawkins. The teller informed me you wish to cast a check on an Australian bank. Oh, uh, yeah, so Mr. Hawkins. Uh, I was an Australian sheep herder, and uh, uh, I got a check right here. It's a little dusty from the trip, you see. Uh, uh, wait a minute here. I'll break the end back off of it. <laughs> Yeah, you right there. Uh, before we cash this check, Mr. Stevens, can you uh, identify yourself? Uh, do you have any uh, credentials? Uh, well, I could show you my genuine Australian boomerang, but I sold it out the hotel window this morning and ain't come back yet. <laughs> Well, don't you have any identifications at all? Well, uh, I didn't bring much with me on this trip, Miss Walker. You see, uh, I was only staying for three, four days. Uh, let me see what I got in my pocket here. Uh, here's some coins here. I may have an Australian one here. Uh-huh, there's a peso. <laughs> there's a ruffle. Yeah, what is this brown one here? Hey, by any chance, have you got a man in this country by the name of Lincoln? <laughs> Mr. Stevens, I hate to put you to all of this trouble. First, in the banking business, we occasionally have to accept a man at face value. No. And I would say that you look like a person in whom I could put complete trust. You good? <laughs> well, in that case, I might stay around here for three, four months, you know. <laughs> oh, I would say this check is all right to be cash. That's 200 even. Now, how do you want this, Mr. Uh, give it to me in small chains. I plan on doing a lot of tipping while I hear you know this. Well, Hootman and Tally Ho. If it ain't slimy, it's too. Oh, <laughs> my old, genuine, native born Australian fellow fellow. Oh, yeah. Uh, just take it easy with it. I uh, beg your pardon. Are you a friend of Mr. Steven? Oh, yes, sir. We both take penicillin. Oh, no. <laughs> Just take it easy, Andy. We, 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 we are in a minute. Well, whenever you're ready to go down under, Mr. Stevens, let me know and I'll go down with you. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Stevens, did you and this man here know each other in a business way in Australia? Oh, I can answer that. For years, we've been partners in the kangaroo raising business. <laughs> Just a minute, I understood Mr. Stevens to say you raised sheep. Oh, well, uh, you see, uh, what Mr. Brown meant was that we raised us both. Uh, what we does, we crosses the sheep with the kangaroos. <laughs> why do you do that? Yeah, uh, why has we been doing that, James? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you see, uh, so many of the baby kangaroos has been dying from pneumonia that we figured that by crossing with the sheep, their uh, pouches would be wool lined. That's what we <laughs> All right, Mr. Stevens, I think perhaps you better call back for this money later this afternoon, after we cable your bank in Australia. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, 
uh, you say cable. I must cable your bank for further information. Well, how do you like that? Just wait till the United Nations hears how you treated me, a naturalized Austrian. Come on, Andy. <laughs> let's take our business someplace else. Yeah, to a bank without no cable, sir. Yeah, come on, Andy. Let's go over here. <laughs> we'll go over to see our lawyer soon, Wall. He'll tell us what to do. <laughs> I got a right to sing the blues. I got a right to feel low down. I got a right to hang around, down around the river. A good man in town just brought me down. All right, see for me here. Deep blue sea, the deep blue sea, will be calling me, it's calling me, say what you will and what you choose, I've got a right to sing the blues, I've got a right to sing the blues, I've got a right to mourn and sigh, I've got a right to live and cry and cry, down around the river, man river, need some legal advice, all right. Well, come in, Stonewall. Well, hello, boys. I'm sorry I'm late. I just got back from court. where I was defending a client of mine that was arrested for driving too slow. Wait a minute. How could he be arrested for driving too slow? It was a stolen car and the cops caught him. Uh, Stonewall, the situation is our situation isn't as bad. Now, I done took some money out of my way's piggy bank. Uh, another case of piggy loss, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see, soon what out of my way's sapphire, break open the bank and find the money gone, she might leave me. And I won't know if there's any hope. Oh, plenty of hope, Kingfish. If you play your cards right, she'll leave you. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, listen, uh, Stonewall, the Kingfish don't want his wife to leave him. Yeah, I, I don't know why she ever started this piggy bank stuff. She used to keep her money in her old pewter mug. Oh, she swallowed it, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> no well, I'm, I say my, my wife had a bank at home. Says I was tickling now and then. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a guy to go up to the house and steal the bank. But he ran into a lot of trouble. Uh, how come? Well, you see, every time the guy went over to steal the bank, my wife was at home and he'd run into her. Mm -hmm. And met my wife five times, but the sixth time, things worked out good. He stole the bank. I stole my wife. <laughs> uh, uh, that was an idea, though, that you got there. Do you know what I'll do? I'm going to get somebody to steal out there. Then you was all out of your trouble. Yeah, well... Got to get back to court. A client of mine is suing a big beverage company. Yeah, how's the trial coming? Well, a funny thing happened in the city. Right in the middle of the trial, a lawyer for the beverage company tried to bribe me. Offered me 12 cases of ginger ale to drop the charges. Imagine trying to bribe a lawyer of my standing with a few cases of ginger ale. Yeah, that was an uh, insult of your professional integrity. They sure was. Well, I got to get on down to the 5 and 10, so I'll pick up a bottle opener. Oh. <laughs> Andy, look here. Uh, uh, soon all has got an idea. Here. Here is the key to my house. I got another one. Now, look here. I will take my way to a moving picture show tonight, and while we is gone, you go in the kitchen, take the piggy bank. Now, it's on top of the icebox. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, too. I'll leave by the back door and come down the fire escape to the alley. That's what's up. <laughs> But 
George. That was nice of you, taking me to a moving picture show. Well, well Sapphire, let's get on in the house here. Okay. I'll open the front door. Holy smoke, the piggy bank's going. How do you know? You ain't opened the door. Well, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, I just had a free ammunition. That's what I had. Uh, wait, 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 let me go back in the kitchen and see. Now, look, honey, it's gone. Oh, my goodness. With all I Oh, well, we're having a good burglar season this year, honey. You can't help it. Somebody has to show. Let's see who it is. Yeah, well, I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Uh, what can I do for you, officer? Well, I'll tell you, folks. I was patrolling my beat when I saw a man come down the fire escape from your window holding a piggy bank under his arm and a chicken leg in his mouth. Well, well uh, you didn't catch the man, did you? No, I didn't. Good. I mean, bad. Uh... <laughs> no, he escaped. When I started after him, he ran into a fence up the alley and dropped the piggy bank. And here it is right here. I know you'll be very glad to get it back. Yeah, that's great, yeah. <laughs> oh, me, that kingfish got the bank back. And I run into the fence, got a lump on my head that's been throbbing all night. I'm going into the drugstore here and get Baldy Jackson to put something on there. Pardon me, Baldy. I'd like to see you. Now, wait a minute. Don't you know better than to break in on a pharmacist when he's busy on the phone with the head physician at the emergency ward of the hospital? Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Tell them, Doc. Tell them, Doc. Uh, I don't want that to be a mistake, so you better give them ingredients to me once more, please, sir. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, okay, doctor. I I'll make it up right away and rush it over to the hospital to you. Yeah. Uh, one more. One more question, please, sir. Do you want it on rye or whole wheat? <laughs> oh, goodbye. Hey, wait a minute, Baldy. This is more important than that. I got a lump on my head here the size of a hen egg. You know anything about first aid? Uh, does I know anything about first aid? Uh, I'm a registered pharmacist, ain't I? Let me look at your head here, son. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what kind of injury that is. Who's asking you? I know a snake bite when I see it. <laughs> Wait a minute, Chair. It so happens I run into a wall. What was a snake doing up there? <laughs> Listen, it's been throbbing all night. Can you stop the pain? Oh, sure. Let, let's get over here to the medicine department. Mm-hmm. Here's a job, Sad. I made myself. Yeah. Hold still now. Hold still and we'll put it on good and sick. Yeah, put it on there. Hey, wait a minute. Take it off. Take it off. It burns. It burns. Burns, huh? I always wondered what that say would do. <laughs> Well, what you want to put it on there, boy, if you don't know what it's going to do? Well, I can't find out what it's going to do to try it on something, can I? Stop sensible, man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me wipe this stuff off. Yeah, let me look at that looking glass here. Now, look at that. You done burned some blisters on my head. Oh, it's impossible to do that. This stuff ain't burned no blisters on your head. Let me see your head. You claim you got blisters. Uh, well, ain't it the truth? <laughs> So that's why I asked you to come over here to my office, Sapphire, so I could tell you the whole story. You mean to say that he took the money out of our piggy bank? Yeah. Why, that's big Now, wait no a minute. Good. Hey, wait a minute, Sapphire. Wait a minute. It was all for you. When you was going to be evicted out the house, he needed money to give you shelter, so he took it out the piggy bank. When you needed food during the last four winters, he had to go to that piggy bank to take care of you. So all the money that he, were, that, he, that he took out of there was for your own good. Well, the bank feels like it's full of money. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Sapphire. There ain't nothing in there but lead washing. I know just how I'm going to handle this thing. Well, Stone Wall, I tried what you told me about having the bank sold, but it didn't work. Yeah, well, what did you do then, Kingsley? Well, nothing to do but I pawned my watch. I sold my two suits of clothes, my one overcoat, two pairs of shoes, my gold ring, even sold a stud to my full dress suit. I got $200, got it broke down into change, and I put it in the piggy bank. Now I'm going home, and me and her go open up the piggy bank together, and Sapphire never going to know that I've been tricking her for the last four years. Yeah, well, I'm glad you were a happy man. Good luck to you, Kingsley. Well, honey, I was home. Uh, let's get the hammer and break the piggy bank open. George, I found out the truth today, and you ain't got to put on act no more. 
Yeah, well, what's he talking about? Honey, let's open up the piggy bank. Well, I wanted to save you a lot of embarrassment and explaining. So I took the piggy bank today just like it was and sold it to the junk dealer for $2. Oh. <laughs> We are going to sing a rainbow man That was beautiful and grand water The whiskers that don't mean nothing We will improvise the words that walk and swing the best is yes, you know, Randy, you the old Rico, let's see, let's see, you will know. Oh, 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 oh. Wait until you hear us swing, swing high, see, though it may be far, let me open up. The pretty little ditty when you swing it slow and mellow. I like a jumbo, what jumbo, so mellow. Every battle likes to show you that he keeps the rhythm mellow. He keeps it mellow with mellow. And he's making me a fool. A fool of me. I get good for a to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Uh, 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 uh.